late afternoon. Uh, called board back into session. We apologize for a little bit of late start uh, for the afternoon session, but we didn't get done with the morning session until 3.15. So uh, with that, uh, we'll go back in order and ask the uh, clerk to call the roll, please. Supervisors Frost. Here. Kennedy. Here. Peters. Here. Cerna. Here. Natoli. Here. And you have a quorum. Okay, very good. We didn't have any items held over from the morning, so we'll go, I guess, first to our two o'clock item. Okay. Uh, we Item 24, set salaries for the elected department heads, the assessor, district attorney, and sheriff for the 2019 through 2023 term of office. Okay, Mr. Devine, I see Mr. Nav Mr. Gill, do you make any comments or? I was going to have to do it. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, David right, Devine. On the fly, uh, very good, David. With personnel services. Um, before you is a resolution that establishes a salary for the district, uh, the assessor, the district attorney, and the sheriff for the term beginning in 2019 and ending in 2023. We do this every four years and the charter requires that we do this six months before the election, which takes place in June. So we have to have this um, action taken before December 31st. Um, like I said, it meets the charter requirements. Um, state law also requires that um, this item um, is done in a public session and a timed item. And the effective date of the adjustments will, won't take place until January 1 of 2019. Um, that's my um, presentation. I have any, if you have any questions, please let me know. David, just real quickly, so we, it talks about the monthly amounts. Why doesn't it give the annual salary? Why isn't that mentioned in the report? I think historically we have done it um, monthly, and um, well, that's we okay. Could, but it we just, could, but, but there's we no could way. Change it to somebody annual. said, "What's the annual salary?" It doesn't say. It never says annual. It never does. I mean no. that. They always do everything by the month. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> okay. I will. Well, maybe we can change four, the weirdest. Four thing. years out, we will absolutely <laughs> change that. I figured it out. You multiply it yeah, times, times twelve. Times twelve, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. We got At a least smart we don't guy do it by board. pay period. <laughs> Okay. All right. Got him. All right. It's been moved. Have a second. Chair would second it. Um, I have no one signed up. Anybody on item 24? All right. Seeing none, please vote. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Next item. Item 25 is the Natomas North Precinct Specific Plan Status Update Workshop. Okay. Mr. Smith, you can raise that podium if you want, Todd. That button Thank you. There. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, okay. Chair, Board of Supervisors. I am not Leanne Moffitt. I am Todd Smith <laughs> at the Office of Planning and Environmental Review. Uh, today's item is uh, just a brief workshop, a status report, essentially, on the Natomas North Precinct specific plan. Can we get the PowerPoint up? Sorry. Thank you. Uh, you probably already know all of this, but for uh, those paying attention at home or in the room, a uh, little, little bit of regional context here. Starting in the, the south of uh, this project area, we have the adjacent city of Sacramento and its ongoing development in the North uh, Natomas Community Plan area, uh, as well as the Greenbrier project that's been fully entitled that's to the southwest uh, of the Nor Natomas North Precinct and the Panhandle, which is undergoing annexation by the city of Sacramento. Uh, further to the west, we have Metro Air Park, which is a, a long entitled project adjacent to, obviously, the, the Sacramento International Airport. Moving to the north in Sutter County, we've got the Sutter Point uh, specific plan area. Uh, and in Placer County, a large master plan area known as Placer Vineyards, and then back into Sacramento County, the Alberta specific plan area. So you can see the, the regional context here, uh, the Thomas North Precinct is centrally located within both existing uh, development and long-term planning development in other jurisdictions adjacent. Todd, can I interrupt real quick? Sure. Uh, you mentioned what's west of the, the plan area, the North uh, Precinct uh, plan area. Yes. As including Greenbrier Metro Air Park, but there's also some other coloration on the map which indicates the uh, SICOG blueprint, blueprint uh, designation that I think it's important to identify between Metro Air Park yep. and the westerly edge of the North Precinct boundary. That is correct. 
So for background, uh, this plan was initiated uh, by the board in February 2012. Uh, we did environmental review initiation in March of 2016. And during that uh, initiation in 2016, the board requested periodic status updates. And that's what today's uh, exercise is about. Uh, following that initiation, we did publish a notice of preparation for the EIR uh, in April of last year. We held uh, a couple of scoping meetings for that EIR with public agencies and uh, private interests. We received a pretty substantial number of NOP comment letters, uh, 28. Uh, and we have been engaged in ongoing outreach and technical discussions with a few uh, of the technical service providers, including water resources, the county's water resources, RD1000, uh, for example. And just to set the context again, this is the original land use plan that was initiated in April of 2016. You see here, uh, I want to make note of the third bullet here, 700 acres of regional and neighborhood retail and entertainment uses. The next slide is the revised land use plan. And I'm, I'm pointing that out because of the reasons for this revision to the land use plan. One of the reasons uh, is a market analysis that was done by the applicant to uh, determine the real need for that large scale of regional uh, retail and commercial. Uh, that overall, that acreage has shrunk substantially, and the applicant has done uh, kind of a refocusing effort on the urban design and circulation elements of this project, really uh, intending to shift from a, a car centric land use plan and circulation network. Uh, to emphasize alternative modes, such as bicycling and transit. Uh, I'll show you a later slide that deals with trails. Um, uh, the other thing here I want to emphasize is the increased number of acres of open space. It's increased by about 200 acres from the original plan. Uh, that has to do with some additional, more detailed modeling that the applicant's done on hydrology and determining uh, a 200-year floodplain elevation. And some of the redesign of the plan here is really turning that, that stormwater uh, conveyance facility into an asset of the plan. So it's creating recreational armatures east and west within the plan, three distinct uh, uh, lines, if you will, that are shown in that light green color. Uh, the applicant has also uh, heard uh, from a number of constituents or, or um, interested parties regarding more active transportation. And so they've increased the numbers, uh, the number of miles of trails and paseos within the plan. And uh, there's also some more detail on the uh, hospital medical campus that I'll get to in a minute. The next two slides are, are just simply comparisons of the old plan and the new plan acreages and units. I'll pause here for a minute. Um, so this slide denotes the regional commercial you'll see a subtraction, 257 acres and change. Uh, that's uh, what I mentioned earlier by that market analysis and that, that reduction of those land uses. And the increase in the floodplain up by 200 acres and change. Uh, one thing to note here on the roads acreage, you'll see that reduction of 115 acres. That has to do with what I mentioned about the, the rethinking the circulation pattern where the applicant is, is focusing on a circulation network internal to the project that is uh, two-lane roadways, whether they're parkways or other collectors, uh, rather than the traditional two to four to six-lane roadways. They're trying to emphasize a smaller uh, uh, roadway width to emphasize how people can get out of their cars, can walk, can bike, uh, be more connected with the community. The only uh, larger roads within the project are the east-west uh, roadways, Alberta and Elkhorn Boulevard. Uh, this slide is the residential land use uh, unit changes. So the big change here is the addition of an active adult component. Uh, this was not a component in the previous plan. Uh, this shows an increase of roughly 1,900 units. Uh, the other increases are primarily uh, the high density and mixed use. Both of those are, are of course, high density, and that total is about 1,000 uh, units and change. Overall, the increase is just over 3,000 units. So this is the uh, plan bike ped network. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the focus is on alternative modes. 
what you see here is the first draft of the plan, uh, 50 miles of class one, that's off street, uh, uh, bike trails and pedestrian trails, 40 miles of class two, 15 miles of class four, that's uh, also known as cycle track where you have a, a lane, a bicycle lane that's separated by some vertical component of infrastructure to provide a safe route for bicyclists. And really this, this network is designed to be uh, a, a connection method for commuters, whether they're internal to the plan, going to a job destination within the plan, uh, people who uh, cycle for recreation, uh, as well as safe routes to schools. So this um, also includes grade separations uh, in, in potentially high conflict points with automobiles. For example, there's one that's planned down along Elkhorn Boulevard where it interfaces with the existing development in the city of Sacramento. There will be some ongoing evolution of this uh, network as the plan evolves and as additional technical studies are completed. Um, Transit, uh, this slide represents the coverage area for the planned transit network that uh, is ultimately planned for 15 minute uh, headways during peak hours at full build out. I'd like to point out the stat here, over 99% of the residential units uh, are within a half mile of the planned transit service. We have had some preliminary conversations uh, with the applicant about the future of transit, and I'm not going to get into all that now, but as, that techno as technology is changing, transit service providers have to be adaptive uh, to the future of transit. Uh, we're not sure exactly what that looks like yet, but we're hoping to have an adapted, adaptable transit service in this plan. Uh, so the health and hospitality mixed use area, that was one of the key features of this plan when we came before you in 2016. Uh, the applicant has done some additional homework and they have a representative here to speak on it, uh, should you so desire. I want to point out one mistake on this slide, that acreage is actually 127 acres, not 150. Um, that's my error. Um, but the site has increased from what the original acreage was uh, due to the physical plant needs associated with that facility. And I will defer to uh, the applicant's representative on the further details of that. So today, uh, really, it's just an opportunity for board members and any interested parties of the public to comment on this. Uh, as we're moving forward, we are going to proceed with issuance of a uh, revised notice of preparation to make sure that all interested parties are aware of uh, the changes to the project and they can uh, be engaged throughout the process, the rest of the process, that is. Uh, I also want to mention that um, we will be, with the applicant, continuing a pretty extensive outreach effort on the project. Uh, so far, we've got about a 10-page list of interested parties, whether they're federal, state, local agencies, uh, other stakeholders like Walk Sacramento, Sacramento Area Bicycle Advocates. Uh, I know we have meetings set up with the school districts, for example, Alberta Joint uh, Elementary School District and Twin Rivers Unified School District. We hope to uh, have a productive conversation with those service providers as well. Uh, we are targeting uh, a mid-process workshop uh, summer of next year uh, when we have more progress on various technical studies that we can uh, keep you informed. If there's any questions of me, I'd be happy to answer them, but uh, I also want to mention or remind you that the, the applicant's representative on the hospital medical campus is here as well. Okay, thanks, Todd. Sure. You can go <coughs> questions by board members of Mr. Smith. You're going to get up pretty easy this afternoon, I think, so. Um, did you indicate, though, that the applicant uh, wanted to have their hospital representative speak? Is that what you said? I did say that, yes. Okay. All right. Well, then, um, if there's no questions of Todd, I'll invite the... Oh, Susan. Yeah, Ms. Peters. thank you. Uh, this is a minor question. Uh, you were talking about the bicycle plan yeah. earlier. Um, between, I'm not sure who's in charge of whether it's planning or transportation, but mm -hmm. when we plan bicycle lanes in, in the future, are we putting in the requirement to put the green marker lanes for bikes? That's a good question. Uh, we haven't fully developed all that yet, but I think that it's important to make sure that whatever planned bicycle facilities are safe for those bicyclists. And if that's the green markings or uh, the class four type of facility with the vertical separation infrastructure, whatever's gonna work to make sure the bicyclists are safe, that's what we wanna do. Okay, so we don't know what that's gonna be at, on this project at this point right. in time. 
Thank you. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. Nothing else. Then um, we'll call forward the applicants. I don't know who's going to be here to make comments. You're Christine. Yes. Okay, Christine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All the way from Texas. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Where is, Al, where is Allen, Texas? Just north of Dallas. Okay, very good. Well, welcome. Thank you. I'm Christine Hammonds. I am with CBRE Healthcare. Um, we are a dedicated healthcare division of CBRE. You, I know everyone's probably familiar with the big green signs. Um, and particularly focused on hospital planning. So I've been a hospital planner for 18 years um, and worked on multiple projects such as this, developing a greenfield site. I'm here today to talk about four basic things. Um, one, why does this development include the um, health and hospitality mixed use district? Um, how it, this development will be phased over time? Um, how each of the components that you see on the plan work with each other? And then how this is also a national trend in uh, planned communities. In the spring of uh, 2016, SG2 Consulting was engaged by OC Properties to do a market analysis of the area. Um, for reference, SG2 is the um, healthcare industry's premier provider of market analysis. Um, they have very detailed methodologies of looking at population, um, use rates, um, and multiple factors and disease trends in order to project the need for healthcare facilities in various markets. Um, they defined a service area of multiple zip codes around the Natomas North Precinct area and looked at the demographics all the way out to 2050 to determine the need for additional health care within the market. By the year 2025, they have identified a need of an additional 150 hospital inpatient beds to support those zip codes. In addition, they're also projecting by 2025 that there will be a need for additional emergency room capacity to serve those various zip codes. Um, and just for reference, um, to develop in the state of California a new hospital, it typically takes five to seven years from the time that you start planning it until that is opened. So 2025, it sounds far away, but it really isn't. So then as we looked at this area and we started to plan what does a hospital need to be on that site, um, Throughout the industry, if you're going to start a new hospital on a greenfield, they typically begin at about 60 beds for inpatient care. They're, they're always phased, and in a new growing market, oftentimes they will start even smaller with a physician practice and urgent care center, starting to get your physicians in place to support the community. And again, as you need the, the inpatient beds, the things such as emergency services, surgical services, and all of those come along with it. Um, so as you build a hospital, you're obviously going to have medical office buildings to go along with it. So by the year 2025, you'd be starting the first phase of medical office and hospital care. Um, we've planned this site um, for far greater than that. This is planned for up to three, 450 hospital beds, 250,000 square feet of medical office buildings. And again, this is a long-term phased organically as the population and the physicians come to this market. Um, they are building block approaches, um, so as you add beds, you can add an additional medical office building. We've also planned smaller buildings for subacute facilities, so those would be things like a rehab hospital, a skilled nursing facility. So we're covering the continuum of care for the community, so whether it's having babies in the hospital to um, rehabilitation all the way through the various levels of care for the, the um, community. Um, Additionally, we have planned for specialty centers. So you may have a heart hospital, you may have a cancer center. So we've incorporated all of the things that go particularly within a hospital campus. Um, those are represented by the purple and the pink buildings on the plan that you see attached. Additionally, as a hospital grows and has more specialty services, you will see there is a hospitality center at the north part of the site. Those are for the hotels, for the families that are coming in to, to stay while their families are getting care. Um, one thing I want to mention, um, the 
key component these days for a hospital is emergency room access. The emergency room is the front entry to a hospital. Um, so having the access directly off of Alberta Road and off of Highway 99 would allow for visibility both to the hospital but also increased visibility to the emergency room. Um, that entrance off of Alberta has um, direct access so that traffic is not mixing with the hotel or not mis mixing with the um, lifestyle center or the residential. Um, as you're coming to a hospital and you're coming to the emergency room, you want to see exactly where you're going and you want to get um, there quickly. Um, so this plan has allowed for that. Um, within the lifestyle center, this is healthy lifestyle, um, healthy restaurants, um, gym components, things that um, will support the community, but will also support the healthcare entity on campus. Um, hospitals are often some of the largest employers around, um, so this would allow staff, patients, visitors to go eat, get off of the get out of the hospital, and to go use all of those other amenities. Um, the blue is potentially a residential and, well, sorry, that's the potential civic village. It could be a library. It could be another um, amenity for the community. Um, and lastly, at the southern part, you'll see the um, residential, the high density residential area as well. Um, as long as you pause. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask you on the, uh, sure. on the up, I guess the north side there, all the pink that is called Lifestyle Center. How many square feet is that? 280,000 square feet. Seems like a lot. That it, I assume it would be similar, uh, George, I see you coming to the podium, but I assume it would be similar to what we see maybe up in El Dorado Hills? El Dorado Hills Town Center, correct. Yeah. So there could be... Uh, we expect uh, the hotel uses with the retail to interact with one another. Okay, so, so it's meant for the residential area that's to the south, east. not just hospital-related uses. Okay. Correct. Because okay. one of the things that Todd mentioned in the reductions of commercial space, significant reduction in the overall yeah. acreage. Right. So this, is, this retail is serving a dual purpose, to be an activity center both for the community and also for the, okay. the hospital. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, and then the other important thing is that developing communities in this manner focused on healthcare is becoming a national trend. Um, just two weeks ago in um, health facilities management, um, the University of Florida just announced a partnership with a developer just outside of um, Jacksonville, and it's known as Wild Light. Um, and so the University of Florida and its academic um, arm has partnered with the developer. So they're going to also do a phased multi-year plan. And again, they're going to start with uh, urgent care, ambulatory surgery center, and physician clinics in that location. So as the community grows, the um, health care partner will be in, in place. Um, and then additionally, outside of Houston, um, CHI St. Luke's, which is one of the larger healthcare providers in the Houston market, has partnered. Um, their development is called Vivacity, and the bigger development is called Valley Ranch. Um, it's in northeast Houston. And so as this development is getting underway, CHI, and um, it's also an academic institution, um, they are beginning to plan their healthcare communities as part of a much larger plan. Are there any West Coast examples? You've come from the East Coast to the middle part of the United States, but how about out, out this way? I have not found any. This will be, you know, the first one. Oh, this is the one you're going to be citing yes. when you go to do something yes. next Yes, we'll do coast else. to coast. Yeah. Okay. Questions? Okay. Any other questions, uh, Christine? Sir? Thank you. I just wanted to, to thank the entire team, certainly uh, our visitor from Texas today, too, um, uh, who have heard um, my interest and concerns loud and clear over now uh, a few years about the importance of this particular component part of the plan area. Um, and I say that as not just the supervisor that represents the area, but as a resident of, um, of Natomas, where unfortunately we don't have a hospital system. We don't have access to uh, a hospital north of the river. Uh, and it's not just Natomas. It's other communities, Alberta, and, and even points uh, north of Sacramento County that just don't have that ease of access, don't have a choice, um, and God forbid we ever have any kind of emergency that affects the um, bridge access over the 
American River. Um, uh, it's fairly distressing to think that we have tens of thousands of people that would have a very, very difficult time accessing uh, hospital care uh, and emergency care. So um, I've asked this team at the onset of this uh, application to really um, seriously consider um, showcasing uh, a medical campus or hospital uh, use for this entire um, uh, plan area, which you know is in the thousands of acres. So this is uh, very encouraging to see uh, the level of seriousness that has been given to this and the resources that the property owners and the, the, the project team have applied um, to make sure that uh, this is being thoughtfully planned and uh, that this board is receiving the kind of information we are today about the intent to hopefully make this a reality at some point in the not too distant future. Very good. Okay, thanks, Christine. <clears throat> I did have, uh, unless there's any other representations on behalf of the uh, applicants, uh, one uh, speaker, another speaker is a uh, Pat Kavu. Kavu? Kavu? I apologize if I mispronounced that. I was trying to, it was written very quickly, though, I guess. See. Good afternoon, <clears throat> honorable supervisors. My name is Pat Kernan. Oh, Kernan. And I'm an attorney with <clears throat> Kingsley Bogard out of Folsom, and we represent both the Alberta School District as well as the Rio Linda <clears throat> Park District. Um, I came here not intending to speak today, but unfortunately, um, Dr. Borgard, the superintendent from Alberta, and Mike Heller, who is now the new district administrator for the Park District, were here to speak, but had to leave. Okay. Um, and I think it's much more powerful from district people than from a stupid attorney. Okay. So um, we're here very quickly. I know you've had a long day. Um, both districts wholeheartedly support the project. Um, as amended with the amended plan. Um, and I just want to compliment <clears throat> the ownership team. I've done a lot of real estate projects in my life. Uh, with that projection to 2050, I'll only be 100 years old. Um, but I've never been more impressed with a group of consultants and owners. Um, they've been great. They've reached out uh, all the time, continuously. We look forward to working with them. Uh, they've involved us early in the process, which was what Dr. Borgard had asked a year and a half ago. They've been great. I cannot say enough good things. And also, I know the uh, the pocket parts are a critical component of the land use plan, and the park district is supportive of that concept. Thank you very much. That's great, Pat. Well, hopefully you're here at 100 years of age to see that. I'll be 96, so we'll see how that goes. So. All righty. Um, I didn't have anybody else to speak. Anybody else wish to address the board? Anybody else from the team? No? Nope. They're all? OK. Um, Todd, thanks uh, so much. Uh, any other? Closing comments for staff. Uh, just thank, thanks to you, Todd, and, and Leanne and Abstentia for all the um, all the effort you put into this. I get uh, very frequent uh, updates on the on the progress of the plan, um, and um, made it uh, clear not just as it relates to the medical campus, but you know whatever plan endeavor that uh, we're going to pursue that involves this amount of acreage. Certainly, uh, we all want to do carefully and look back at some point um, and be very proud of. So, so far, I, I really like what I see. Very good. So, let's be back to us. Uh, this was just a workshop today. We'll be back to us uh, midsummer 2018. Next installment. All right, very good. Okay. Um, that was just a received file. Yes. Review and comment. I mean, did, did that. So, that concludes the agenda. If we have any appointments, uh, yeah, we do have. Do you have some? Okay, okay, very good. So that would be item number 26. 26. You are continuing to December 5th, the Assessment Appeals Board, Delta Citizens Municipal Advisory Council, Developmental Disabilities Planning and Advisory Council, In Home Supportive Services Advisory Committee, North Highlands Foothill Farms Community Planning Advisory Council, Sacramento County Treasury Oversight Committee, South Sacramento Area Community Planning Advisory Council, and the Southeast Area Community Planning Advisory Council. For your matters today, we have the Carmichael Recreation and Park District, Supervisor Peters. Continue to December 12th. Equal Employment Opportunity Advisory Committee, Mr. Natoli. I don't have those nominations down here unless you have. I don't have them. If you're okay with it, I have some notes. We'll go ahead and read, yeah, read them into the record. Then if okay. You could, yeah. The notes I have uh, are the chiefs are recommending to continue to, to December 5th. 
Okay, <laughs> that's easy enough. Sacramento County Youth Commission, uh, Supervisor Cerna. Yeah, I'd like to nominate uh, Lauren Kim and waive the process and then please continue the remainder to December 12th. Okay, move and second it. please vote. Unanimous vote. And then we have the uh, Sheriff's Outreach Community Advisory Board. Uh, this would be Supervisor Peters. Please continue to December 5th. Okay, and then uh, Supervisor Natoli. Um, Nominate Bill Cardoza. Okay. Have that. And that concludes your nominations. Okay, let's go to nominations. Um, County Executive, any comments or announcements? Uh, nope, not today. Okay. You'll be back on the 14th, will you? I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, members of the board, anybody on the right? Announcements? Comments? To the left? Okay. And I would just, uh, I don't know that we need to adjourn necessarily, just note though that certainly our thoughts and prayers are with the uh, families and the community of Southland Springs and Texas after tragic series of events there or so. And uh, with that then, uh, thank everybody for their endurance today and uh, we'll be back in session, same place, different time, or same time next Tuesday. With that, we'll be adjourned.